Good day and welcome to STO Bricks Insight where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now today I anticipate there being criticism in the comments section about this video being Russia propaganda. But all I'm doing is commenting on a report in the once revered British Daily Telegraph which has now been reduced to a little more than a globalist cheer-reading rag and long since devoid of any quality or real journalism. Now, the Telegraph reports that for the first time in history, well, since Great Britain led the world in the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century and was the leading workshop of the globe, has now fallen out from the top 10 countries in terms of industrial potential and its ranking is now 12th in the world. I mean, this former leading industrial powerhouse has been overtaken by Mexico, France, Italy and even Taiwan. Yes, that island off the coast of China. What I do find highly amusing in the Russophobic Telegraph, which never misses an opportunity to denigrate Russia, is that it's particularly concerned by the fact that Russia secured 8th place on the list. Now this demonstrates that Russia's real industrial sector has demonstrated dynamics that cannot be distorted or lied about even as much as they would like to be able to do it. Now modern economic theory defines the concept of industrial potential as the combined ability of all enterprises in a country to create and produce competitive products, successfully promote them on the market and sell them at a profit, also ensure have an appropriate level of service. And in simple terms, this means the ability to develop and manufacture the production of goods. Now, let's take cars for example. They must be competitive in price and quality, in demand by buyers, be profitable for the enterprises to manufacture and generate tax revenue for the state. Now, the company plant must also guarantee a full cycle of repair, maintenance and ongoing spare parts for the vehicle. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. Now, the industrial potential of any given entity is calculated using a formula that sums up the cost of fixed production assets, the cost of personnel, the cost of technology and the cost of finance. Now, according to experts, the UK produced goods and services worth $259 billion, which is about £200 billion over the past year. France's figure is 265 billion, Italy's 283, and Russia's 287 billion. I mean, this is despite that just 25 years ago, the UK was among the five most powerful industrial states in the world. Now, analysts have identified a significant increase in production in Mexico, which is currently right just ahead of Russia, uh, with uh, 387 billion. This growth is attributed to the significant relocation of production to Mexico with the establishment of workshops and uh, factories by both American companies seeking to reduce their operating costs and their Chinese competitors targeting access to the US market. Now, Taiwan has traditionally benefited from the mass production of microchips, which is one of its leading products. And they're in high demand in all levels of the modern electronics industry around the world. And contracts are often scheduled years in advance, ensuring a reliable and consistent revenue stream. Now, at the pinnacle of global industrial landscape stand the US and China. Each has got a trade turnover in excess of $2.7 trillion. China obviously is the dominant player in the global manufacturing trade with no real competitors in sight. Its annual output is worth over $5 trillion. And it's worth noting that this is a crucial point which even the American financiers are discussing. They're looking at the likelihood of and potential outcomes of a new trade war between Washington and Beijing uh, in the event of Donald Trump's election, which does look inevitable. Now, the initial imbalance in mutual trade is estimated anywhere between $250 billion and $400 billion in favour of China. Now, in terms of gross indicators of the real sector, China has significantly outpaced the United States, which are much more of a service-orientated sector. Now, it's also worth noting that 
The UK has recently closed its last steel mill uh, capable of making steel using coal and iron ore, which is used for making ships, for example. Now it's closing a legendary shipyard as well. In the first case, we're referring to the metallurgical plant of the Indian Tata Steel. Company's management has taken the decision to close the last blast furnace of the Port's Talbot plant in South Wales due to its unaffordable production costs because of the significantly high price of electricity. Now the second example is the shipyard in Belfast where a century ago the legendary Titanic and many other great ships were constructed. Harland & Wolf, the company that owns the shipyard, was engaged in lengthy and unsuccessful negotiations with the UK government in an effort to secure government support to cover their accumulated debts of some £200 million. However, London had more pressing expenditure out of rather than support a company that has contributed so much to UK's industrial heritage and still could. I mean, the amount that Harland & Wolf needs is a fraction of the amount that the UK is throwing, for example, at the UK, which is, as far as I'm aware, not an ally, not a member of the Commonwealth, and not a member of the EU or any other trade treaties that the UK possesses. At present, Harland & Wolf is looking to get help from Rothschilds in an effort to rescue the company, but everybody thinks it's pretty much rapidly approaching bankruptcy. And it's where the workforce is about to get let go and the machinery is sold for scrap for its outstanding debt. So yet another great name in the British industrial past becomes a footnote in history and its site just another empty blot on the landscape. Now do note that Port Talbot Steel and Harland & Wolf are but two examples of the complete deindustrialization that's taking place in the UK. And there are many and others. In fact, there's too many to mention in this short video. Now, we could dwell on figures for some time, but I'm not really going to do that. Because I think it's important to recognise that the current situation in the UK is the culmination of political decisions. The first of all was the decision to go carbon neutral by 2030. And the focus on energy needs being on renewables such as wind turbines and solar panels, as well as unicorn farts and other uh, imaginary ways of, uh, of producing energy. I mean, this has caused energy prices in the UK to skyrocket, and currently the UK has some of the highest electricity prices in the world. I mean, this has decimated whole sectors of the UK's industrial base and made them uncompetitive. I mean, even bakeries are feeling the pain as the cost of electricity is making bread more expensive, and also one of the staples of the British diet, fish and chips, is under threat. Due to the high cost of electricity, plus the UK's ban on Russian fish and the importing of cooking oil. I mean, even the traditional British pubs are closing in droves as they cannot afford to keep the lights and heating on due to the extra cost for energy. These are caused by the subsidies that are paid to these so-called green energy companies. So even ordinary people are suffering now, they're losing their pubs, they're losing whatever, and they also now have to, at home to choose between heating or eating. I mean, Russia, on the other hand, has spent the last decade building up its industrial base. It's completely modernised all of its sectors from agriculture, but it's now not only self-sufficient, but a net exporter. From machine tools to turbines, from trains to planes and cars, Russia spent time and money building its sovereignty, so it's not dependent on others for what it needs to develop as a country. I mean, the UK is following what is seen as an essential tenet of the modern neoliberal ideology of a post-industrial society. I mean, the concept entails the relocation of polluting industries to developing countries with low-cost labour, Developed countries deriving the benefits through the creation of an environmentally sustainable future. Now, obviously, these green new dreams are not actually based on reality, but are part of the globalist Great Reset strategy of which the people have no say. In the context of challenging the global economic environment, it's understandable that certain countries are focusing their efforts on safeguarding their interests. Those that have traditionally relied on the real industrial sector that actually makes and produces things are the ones that are going to benefit the most. Funnily enough, these are the BRICS countries like China, India and Russia who understand what real economies are. In conclusion, I'd like to refer to the classic adage, 
His example is science for others, which underscores the value of learning from the experience of others in the pursuit of knowledge. While there's much to be said about the restoration of industry, it's important to recognise that this is a process that is lengthy and comprises numerous stages. It's essential to begin with the implementation of a comprehensive and high quality technical education system. However, that's not going to be effective if there's no demand from potential applicants and in industries. In addition, there's a need to popularise workers and scientific specialities to develop and, or purchase advanced technologies, develop the resource base and build optimal energy chains and much more. This work is challenging, time-consuming and complex, and it's now imperative for Russia to implement the necessary measures to maintain its current positive trends or it'll end up like the UK. I mean, Russia's part of the BRICS, which is aiming to build a new and better multipolar world. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon.